Hello all, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. Um, today we are going to make salsa. So um, I started uh, chopping up some of the tomatoes yesterday along with a couple of the peppers and that's as far as I got. We're still getting over COVID. I don't have high energy levels these days, including just chopping veggies and things. So um, I'm okay with it being a two day process this time. Um, and a little disclaimer before I show you how we make our salsa. Um, this is a recipe that has been passed around between family and friends for several decades now. I have no idea what the original um, source was. And it is a little bit of a different recipe. There's an ingredient that isn't typically in salsa. Um, and we do can it, um, we water bath can it, and I don't know if it's an approved recipe, so um, follow along at your own discretion. Um, I generally try to do things pretty safely, um, but this, is, this was literally the very first canning recipe I ever learned and made, and like I said, I've been doing it for 20 years, and it's our favorite, and I'm not gonna stop doing it. So um, if I ever came across a recipe I liked as well, then maybe I would perhaps consider it, but that day hasn't yet arrived. So that's my little disclaimer. So we will just get the rest of the ingredients going here. <clears throat> These are a few jars that I did a couple weeks ago. They've literally just been sitting here on the counter. So um, one recipe made four pints, um, and I'm gonna make the same size today, so I expect to get another four pints. We, I'm not making as much salsa this year. This is this will be like I think my third batch maybe. Um, last year we made like I don't know eight or nine batches, and we still have salsa left over. Um, from last year so I was able to make bruschetta and I'm planning on making some pizza sauce um, you know some other things that we don't generally make because our tomatoes are mm, prioritized I guess for salsa this is literally one of our favorite things so um, I've got my tomatoes and things here I've got my recipe. Um, we need to add some onions and garlic still, along with vinegar. And then there's spices that get added later, but the secret ingredient that we need to add that I haven't chopped up yet is actually apples. So let's get going on that. So one more disclaimer before we get too far is that I, while the recipe that I have does say to um, blanch and remove the skins, I don't bother. I do remove um, most of the seeds and the liquidy gel part um, as I'm chopping up the tomatoes and I make sure that I chop them up very fine so that if there's little pieces of skin um, in the salsa, it's negligible. Um, I've never really seen the point of removing the skins and a lot of people you see them dehydrating them now and using them as a thickening agent. Like why wouldn't you just leave the skins in originally? I can maybe see removing it in something like salsa where it's not getting blended, but especially in a sauce or something, I'm not, I'm not doing that extra step. So that's just how I roll. Um, but by all means, if you prefer to remove the skins, go ahead and remove the skins. All right, it's later that evening. Jarrett wasn't feeling very well when he got home, so I put it, put it away for a while. Um, I'm trying to be quiet, so I'm doing a voiceover. <laughs> the recipe actually calls for eight onions, but I'm not a huge onion fan, so I usually try to use one or two, you know, normal-sized onions. I've got... I don't know, seven or eight of my little puny onions here. Um, and I'm just gonna get those chopped up 
and added. I'm just showing you how adorable they are. I really do like the shape. These were Rosa di Milano, and I might give them another try next year to see if I can get bigger onions. So to save myself some time, I'm going to just give them a little chop in my mini food processor here, and I'm gonna do this with the apples as well when I get that far. I'm just pulsing it. I don't want them, uh, you know, super shredded here. I still want some chunkiness, I guess. So, um, pulse, pulsing, I, f I find I get the best result. So I'm just going to get this emptied out into my pot along with my tomatoes and peppers. And when it comes time to do the apples, I will get the vinegar added as well. It will help stop the browning um, from happening on the apples. All right, I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna speed it up for you, but I'm gonna get these apples peeled and chopped up. These are teeny tiny apples. The recipe calls for six, but I added seven um, just to make up for the size. Every time I peel apples, I always think of my grandmother. I remember um, her peeling apples and being able to get the entire skin in one piece when she was making apple pies. So that's always a nice memory that I have when I'm peeling apples. All right, this is the first apples I'm gonna chop up here. So I'm gonna get my vinegar added to my pot so that when I add the chopped up apples, which I'll do two or three at a time, um, it will prevent them from browning. And this recipe calls for two and a half cups and I had pretty much just exactly enough. Just giving you a little peek here at uh, what it looks like and getting those apples stirred in and making sure that everything is covered in the liquid. Okay, this recipe calls for six cloves of garlic. I'm a huge garlic fan. I'm just picking out a couple of bulbs here. Um, I've already picked out my seed garlic for the year, so a lot of these bulbs have three or four cloves, um, and I think I picked out one with three and one with four, so I had that extra clove. So I'm gonna get these peeled and through the garlic press and added to my pot. I always like to smash my garlic cloves a little bit. I find it makes it easier to peel and it also gets those allicin compounds releasing in the garlic as well for the health benefits. I won't make you watch all of the peeling or all of the pressing. Um, I, have, I was having kind of a hard time um, getting the garlic pressed, so <laughs> I'll speed it along for you. I gotta work on that hand strength, I guess, for next year. So this is what everything's looking like after all the apples and garlic has been added and I ended up putting it away for the night. All right, welcome back to day three of how long can we drag out this salsa recipe. Um, I just stuck it in the fridge overnight. It had the vinegar and all of the like produce ingredients, the apples, the tomatoes, the onions, the garlic, all of that. And I was just too tired to 
actually cook it down last night. It takes between one and two hours and then you have to go through the canning process. So we're doing this today. Um, so this is what we have and <clears throat> I'm gonna basically bring it to a boil. I'm gonna stick it on medium high. Um, I'll bring it to a boil and then I'll reduce it to a simmer and it will simmer for the next one to two hours. It's usually usually around an hour and a half I'm done and don't want to cook it anymore. Um, and I will <clears throat> be leaving the lid on for most of it. I'm actually going to, rather than cook it down to thicken it, I'm going to use two cans of tomato paste to thicken it up. And yeah, so that's the plan. All right, I brought this to a boil and it's been simmering for close to an hour now. So I'm going to start getting the dry ingredients together and I'm also going to get my canner with some water in it and get that started heating up so that it's ready for when we need it. Okay, we're getting our final ingredients ready for the salsa. So I need one cup of sugar. And I need one tablespoon of salt, which these are my favorite things in the world. Have you guys ever seen these? They are adjustable tablespoon and teaspoons. So this will go all the way from one teaspoon um, up to a tablespoon. So I need one tablespoon of coarse salt. This is sea salt. I need half of a teaspoon of paprika. So I'll just adjust my little Spoon here. So half a teaspoon. <clears throat> I need a half a teaspoon of dry mustard. Two teaspoons of cayenne. This will make it fairly spicy, so if you don't like it, I wouldn't call it super hot or anything, but if you like a milder salsa, don't put as much in. And that's it for the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna kind of give these a little stir together, get some of the lumps of sugar out and stuff. I've also got my water bath canner heating up there. Um, I just have it on medium right now. I don't think it's boiling yet, but the water's hot, so it should be close to done by the time we're ready for it. All right, I've got my jars out, my lids out. Um, I think it's time to add the seasonings. So I'm going to dump that in there along with my two cans of tomato paste. It's still gently boiling. And once I get this stuff added, we just want to cook it for maybe about five minutes to make sure all that sugar is dissolved and everything is stirred well together. Does anyone else hate trying to get all the tomato paste out of a can?
I just watched a video yesterday, Crystal from Whole Fed Homestead made her own tomato paste. And I was like, ooh, it's literally an all day process though. Definitely not gonna happen this year, but I'm thinking, hmm, perhaps next year, and then I don't have to fuss with cans anymore. All right, I think that's as good for that as we're gonna get. <clears throat> So I'm going to get this all stirred in and you can see instantly that tomato paste makes, uh, makes the salsa a lot redder, a lot more tomato-y. And this is kind of, I don't know how well you can tell. Get you down here so you can see a little better but this is um, kind of the consistency that we like in our salsa it's quite thick I don't know if you can tell that or not but we're just gonna cook this for five minutes and then we will come back and jar okay I think our salsa is done. So, I'm going to get my ladle and get these jars filled up. Turn it off too. I try to be as neat as possible, but sometimes I make, sometimes I make a mess. I'm guessing about four pints, but we will see. I'll get these filled up and come back. Okay, I was able to get almost five and a half pints, so this isn't quite full enough, so this will just go in the fridge and we'll eat this right away. But these other ones, I'm going to get some paper towel. I don't have any vinegar out, so I'm just gonna use water and wipe the rims. I always think I do such a neat job and then I can see that there's stuff on the rims and you're like, well, this is why we do this. So. <clears throat> there we go. I've got my lids all here. I just have to grab my rings. One second. Finger tight, which isn't hard to do when the jars are hot because I don't want to touch them for longer than a second or two. Sometimes these are kind of hard to fill, especially when you're filming yourself. I think I 
hear my water boiling. If not, it should be pretty close. We are right at sea level, so I am going to process these for 10 minutes. We're not quite boiling, so I'm going to give this another minute before I put my jars in. Okay, we're boiling. I'm going to get these jars in. I always find it easier. I never like to actually lower the rack with the jars on it. So I just carefully shove it down there and hope they don't fall in the water. So. So, I'm going to let this come to a boil again before I start my timer, and I go for, we are right at sea level, so I'm going to boil this for 10 minutes. I'm going to turn this off for a second. So, I'm, my timer has just gone off. I'm going to turn the heat off, and I'm going to just crack the lid a little bit and I'm just going to let it sit for five minutes before I come back and remove the cans. Alright, it's been a little longer than five or ten minutes but um, these haven't cooled down a whole lot so I'm just going to remove them, set them over here. Pinging already, that's always a good sign. And that is pretty much it for our family's salsa recipe. So, there's our five jars. This is what they look like. Looks good. Thanks for watching.